So in today's video, we'll be talking about some of the most common toxic chemicals found in cosmetic products, including makeup and skincare, as well as the harmful effects it can have on your health. The FDA, also known as the Food and Drug Administration here in the US, actually does not even have the authority to pre-approve cosmetic products before they are marketed to the public. So it's really up to us as consumers to pay attention and to not go in blindly and just pick up any product and put it on our skin and just inhale all those toxic chemicals at the end of the day it's really up to you but this is just me sharing this in order for you to become a better shopper and also just take care of yourself please keep in mind that everything that I'm saying in this video is based on research and also personal experiences because I do struggle with contact dermatitis anything that is basically a toxin to me will leave me with rashes and hives and a bunch of sneezing going on and it's just like a whole show if you struggle with sensitive skin especially if you have kids especially if you're pregnant this is going to be such a beneficial video for you so the first one is parabens which you use as preservative to extend the shelf life of any product and prevent bacteria but the big issue here is that parabens is also known as xenoestrogens which mimics the estrogen in our body so this is a big no-no you do not want to be putting anything on your body that is mimicking a natural hormone in your body that naturally produces so it's kind of like if it's not natural then what is it and studies have shown that it does lead to hormonal imbalances and it messes with our endocrine system the good news is that companies have now started putting that label on that says paraben free so if it does say paraben free it most likely is but if I were you, I would still check the label and just make sure. These here are the common paraben names. If you ever feel like you can't really identify the name, just remember that at the end of that name, it's always going to say paraben. So it's usually pretty easy to spot. The next common ingredient that you want to avoid altogether in your cosmetic products are phthalates. These are used in fragrances, nail polish, moisturizers. The problem with phthalates is that they also lead to hormonal disruption and they have shown to also have developmental issues in children. I'm not a chemist, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor, so I would not even begin to attempt to name these phthalate names, but this is a common list of phthalates that you can spot. The next common toxic ingredient you want to avoid is formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is another type of preservative, but they irritate the skin in the eyes. So going back to if you have sensitive skin or contact dermatitis like I do, it's always, always going to cause hives or some sort of skin reaction. Formaldehyde has found to be in nail polish, eyelash glue. So if you cannot for the life of you, just walk away from that because I know that it feels nice to get your nails done and your hair done and you know it's just part of like that self-care routine that a lot of women do but in reality it's just not doing you any good it looks good but on the inside it's not doing you any good so I have to confess this is the second time that I do my nails in my entire life my nails have always been very fragile and they do grow fast that I don't have an issue with that but the thing is that they chip always and I've never ever been able to find a nail polish that works that's non-toxic and you know cruelty free and all that good stuff so if you guys do know of any please let me know in the comments this is the second time that I ever get my nails done in my life and I regret it because my nails grow so fast that it's only been a week and I already need like a refill never ever going back into a nail salon again I'm just gonna keep looking for a good non-toxic nail polish just wanted to confess that because we all have something that we can work on right personally in my home I do not use any toxic cleaners but on my cosmetic products I've been slowly but surely working on transferring and like moving towards non-toxic products. So here is a list again, these are the common names of formaldehyde that can be found in cosmetic products. And the next common toxin you do not want to include in the ingredient list in the products that you buy are metals and heavy metals. These heavy metals have been found commonly in lipsticks and eyeliners because of that black residue that the eyeliner gives you, like the black and the brown. And then in lipsticks because of that heavy rich pigment the fda or the food and drug administration has banned heavy metals from cosmetic products but in reality they've only banned from 9 to 11 toxins from cosmetics when the european administration has banned more than 1600 of them and 
you never really know until you read the ingredient list what's in your product. Now on to the next you want to avoid, which is a toxin chemical is triclosan. Now triclosan has been found in shampoo, deodorants, toothpaste, mouthwash. This is an antimicrobial agent that has been linked to hormonal disruption and just all together messes with your hormones, which in return messes with the cells in your body and everything else. The FDA did rule out triclosan as a toxin back in 2016. Just as a tip, whenever you are reading the ingredient list, the very first ingredient that you see is the one that had the highest percentage in that cosmetic product and it goes down as you go down the list. So obviously the last ingredient on there is with the least percentage amount of that in that cosmetic product. I was looking at this eyeshadow the other day from the company e.l.f. These are like these bite size, really cute, three to four colored eyeshadows. And I was looking for this black eyeshadow because I wanna be able to start doing like a eyeliner look, but with eyeshadow. And the very first ingredient was talc, which is another common toxin. So I was like automatically like, no, I do not want this one. The problem with talc is that when it's not properly processed, it can be contaminated with asbestos, which is a carcinogen. Carcinogens are just a fancy name for a toxin that can cause cancer. Now, while I was doing my research, I did find that talc is very, very common in eyeshadows, which is why it was the very first ingredient on that eyeshadow that I was looking at. And you can also find this ingredient in powders. So things like setting powders, blush powders, apart from it being a carcinogen, which can cause cancer, it also causes pulmonary effects. So if you inhale this, it'll definitely mess with your lungs so i just wanted to make this video very short and simple easy to understand so i hope that this helped you now moving on to the resources that i was going to provide for you to be able to easily find out if any cosmetics that you're thinking about buying is toxic or not or has toxic chemicals because there are clean beauty products out there that says paraben free you know like toxin free but you look at that one ingredient that's not a clean ingredient and you're like oh man it was almost perfect but i mean it's really up to you obviously you're not gonna die the next day that you use this product this is just something that slowly like over the years over decades of constantly using these toxin chemicals in your product of course you're gonna see a long-term effect so i'm gonna grab my phone because this is where i have all of the names for the websites and the apps the first one that i've been using is called ewg healthy living so basically if you have the product in hand you can scan the barcode and it'll bring out the whole ingredient list and pinpoint which one is a toxin if you see something in the website online that you are thinking about buying then you can copy and paste you can put the ingredients on here or like the name of the product and it'll tell you which ones are toxins it'll also give you the level of how clean and or not clean it is so if it's EWG verified then it will have that logo on it either on the product or on here but for example if it has number one on it then that means that it may have like one or two possible toxins or possible ingredients that can cause allergies for example like for me i have sensitivity to eucalyptus if i put eucalyptus oil soaps or something on my body i will get a rash like a small hive rash but if i just use it to diffuse like my house for it to smell good i'm totally fine so eucalyptus oil even though it's natural it can cause a sensitive reaction to me so that's just an example of why they would put number one next to that for example, if I'm looking for toothpaste, right? So I just put toothpaste on the search bar and then all this list of toothpaste products will come up. And next to it, we'll have that EWG verified sign next to it. But if I keep scrolling down, I start seeing that it's number two, number one, number three. So obviously green is good, right? Go. Yellow is, hold on, let's see. And then red is like bad, don't, right? Don't take it. So that's how it goes. There's a three, there's four. The ones that they recommend is like the Modger, Modger, Model Toothpaste Refresh. That one's good. The Attitude Toothpaste, that one's good. Fluoride Free, Better and Better. Fully Charged Toothpaste, that one's good. David Sensitive and Whitening Toothpaste, that one's good. 
So the reason why this got a one and not a EWG verified label on the side is because it has calcium and calcium is a natural resource and an earth resource. Calcium is a metal but it's not a toxin metal. It's more like an earth metal. So if you do have sensitive skin, it can cause irritation. It says persistence and bioaccumulation or moderate irritation in your skin, eyes, or lungs. So, I mean, it could cause irritation, but it's not like a toxic chemical. Apart from this app, there's this website called INCI Decoder. It decodes the ingredients. So you copy and paste and all of the ingredients will be listed as like what it's for, the health hazard that it may have. There's also another website called, called Cause DNA. So this provides ingredient analysis and it searches for products and individual ingredients for irritant for irritants and safety ratings. There's another one called Beautypedia and it offers reviews and ingredients analysis for a range of cosmetic pro uh, products and it helps you do the same thing. It just weighs the ingredients and you know, gives you the health hazards that it may have. I did want to talk about just a lighter topic now that we are done with the horrible news about all these toxins in your cosmetic products. It's now very common and very easy to find beauty brands online. If you live in an area in the world where, you know, there is a lot of toxic chemicals and it's very difficult for you to find grocery stores, Sephora or Ulta or like things like Target. If you don't have any of these stores where there is, uh, you know, alternatives to these toxic chemicals and products, just shop online, you know, there's Amazon, there's a bunch of other beauty brands, which I will list for you guys. In my description, I am going to list up to 20, I think maybe even more beauty brands that I personally have used, as well as have heard of and heard really good reviews of for you guys to check out. And then I'll give you the name of it and then the website with the link towards that. Now, just so you guys know, it's not gonna be any extra cost to you. I did include some of those links with affiliate links. So if you buy a product from there, I will get a very, very, very small commission out of it. So, and it's not for all the brands, it's just for some of them. There's another brand that I'm going to mention called Recorator, and I use it for my home. They also have beauty products and skincare on there that you can use. So if you do end up buying from them, I would like for you to take 10% off your first order with my code baola 10 off and that will be included in the description as well. If you guys like this video and found it very informative and helpful for you, then go ahead and give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like these.